In this video, I'm gonna show you my daily brushing and flossing routine with all the best tips to get your teeth virtually spotless, to avoid gum disease and cavities, and have great oral health. I'm Dr. Rick Buck, and I've been a dentist for 15 years, so like and subscribe if you have teeth. This routine is based off my own testing of different brushing and flossing techniques, sequences, and product reviews, and also what science has already taught us about how to take care of our teeth. And I will show you with results that will blow Blow your mind. Let me start as I always do by staining all the plaque in my mouth pink. So take a look at that and then I will start flossing. This is a lot of plaque because I didn't brush for two days to show you the best contrast and results possible. Now, the first important part of my routine to understand is that if you need to, eat and drink before you brush and floss, not after. And I will explain more about that later as to why. So now, if you have ever wondered about the sequence, it is important to start with flossing as I will do here. Why? A few reasons. The most important areas to clean in the mouth are in between the teeth. As you can see, the floss does all the heavy lifting of the pink plaque colonies as I'm flossing. If you floss first, a lot of times it will dislodge the whole colony of plaque together. Then after the brush, brushes it all away. If you brush first, the brush will break up the plaque colonies and then it won't come out as effectively as one unit when flossing after. So that's why we floss first. For example, what is easier to clean? Legos that are all kind of stuck together already or Legos that are all disassembled and scattered across the room. If your plaque is disassembled, it will be more difficult to floss it. And then on top of that, when you floss first, you remove the plaque so that the fluoride can more fully interact with the tooth to strengthen the teeth, especially in between the teeth. Okay, while I'm flossing, I should go over a little bit of the technique. I should note that once you snap the floss through, you pull the floss so that it wraps around the back tooth as far as you can go, and you pull it up a time or two without fully snapping the floss back out of the teeth. Then you do the same thing for the front side of that gap, and you pull the floss all the way out this time. Don't worry too much if debris is left behind. Once again, you will brush and rinse this out in just a moment. You just want to dislodge the plaque. Now the most important part to all of this is the floss itself. This floss is the best. It does four things. Because of its material and unique woven pattern, it tightens to fit between the teeth. When loose in between the teeth, it expands to increase the surface area to possibly get in the shallow concavities. Then when you pull it against the tooth, it flattens really wide to increase the surface area to wipe against the surfaces as much biofilm as possible that it could swipe clean. Lastly, its woven structure makes it extremely efficient for gripping the bacterial plaque to dislodge it. Of all the products I suggest, I love this floss the most. And not to mention it has xylitol, so the xylitol will help you to have less plaque in the coming days as well. I will get to the accompanying brush with this in just a second, but the affiliate link below this video will give you the best deal on the floss and the brush. So you can see the results of just flossing. After I rinse, the results are decent already and we haven't even brushed. But now we go on to the brushing. Now, if you ask anyone, including on all the big toothbrush companies' websites, they tell you the best way to brush with an electric toothbrush is just kind of glide the brush along and let the brush do all the work. But if you've watched some of my other videos, you know already that my results do not match up with this. And consistently, because I do this with almost every toothbrush, I brush this way and my way and my way is always better. Whenever I brush with an electric toothbrush, I also brush manually at the same time with very light pressure and I always get better results than when I just brush guiding the toothbrush along. To me, it is clear that you should manually brush as well while you're using your electric brush. Don't just glide it along, but you need to make sure to brush lightly so you're not pressing too hard because there are bad results to that too. You get the bonus of all the manual movements to the sonic movements this way. Now, I use this toothbrush company because it really has the best design in both the toothbrush and the floss. The brush head design is simple, but perfect in my opinion, and I have searched for a long time for the perfect brush with shorter and longer bristles throughout the brush head. And whenever I use this brush, 
brush with the brushing movement as well, the results are stunning. I don't get near as far in between the teeth with other toothbrushes. And how far you get in between the teeth is the measure of a great toothbrush. You see, almost all toothbrushes can get the exposed surfaces of your teeth very well, but the best brushes get far in between the teeth. And this one, in my opinion, gets the furthest in between the teeth. Now, you need to make sure you follow all the correct brushing techniques. Angle the brush at 45 degrees to the tooth so that the bristles get underneath the gums as well. Brush 30 seconds in each quadrant and so on and use light pressure. Now, you may be asking, what toothpaste should I use? I am currently testing them out, but I like ones with either sodium fluoride or stannous fluoride. I prefer sodium fluoride, but that may change as I test more of the toothpaste out. Now, I should explain, I did something here to better show you the results, and it is not what I do each day. This may sound gross to a lot of people too, but when I'm done brushing, I normally don't rinse, and I especially don't rinse with water. I just spit the bulk of the toothpaste out, and then go on because the fluoride that is in the toothpaste will continue to strengthen the teeth as it mixes with the saliva and teeth. But with results like this, toothpaste is probably the least important part, especially if you follow my next device. But first let's look at the results of my technique so far and there is more to go over my routine after this, so don't go away yet. The results appear flawless. I mean, you almost can't even tell there was any staining anywhere in my mouth. It is that good. And this is after two days of not brushing my teeth. I think if I really look close, maybe I can find just a tad somewhere. But for the most part, actually I can't. I mean, to tell you the truth, I'm sure if I look long enough, maybe I can see something. But for the most part, this is the best results that I think you can get after testing out all the brushes and flosses and techniques that I've tested out so far. So now that you just flossed and brushed away all the colonies of bacteria off your teeth, it is important to know that those colonies are all going to come back. But what you do after you brush depends on what type of bacteria will grow back, and that is important. It's a topic that I will soon be covering in another video to explain why exactly this happens. But when you eat, especially sugars, the bacteria in your mouth also eat the same food. Now, most of the bacteria in those colonies are good bacteria and some are bad, but there is one type called Streptococcus mutans. Their byproduct that they make is really acidic and that is what causes cavities. But worse is they are able to survive better than the other good bacteria in the acidic conditions in your mouth. As you can see from these videos I did, the pH in my mouth decreases and is thus more acidic shortly after I swish with a water and sugar solution. Going back, you just brushed away all the colonies of plaque in your mouth and all of the bacteria. But whether there is a lot of bad bacteria that also starts to recolonize depends on how quickly you eat and how much you eat, especially how quickly you eat sugar after brushing. I am an intermittent faster and I eat very, very low amounts of sugar each day. It just so happens I started cutting out sugar and being more strict with my intermittent fasting about a year ago right after I made my first toothbrush video. You can see the starting daily amount of plaque in my mouth has gone down from then until now. The two big differences are that I now do intermittent fasting and low sugar. But if you want to learn more about all the amazing health benefits of intermittent fasting, I have a video on another channel that I did where I got my blood drawn every day for three days while I fasted. Soon I will do a video on sugar as well. The point is, don't rush to eat, especially sugar, after this routine, and you will not get bad bacteria taking over your mouth again once it starts to recolonize. Remember, the best deals on products I recommend are in the description below this YouTube video. That is my routine. I hope you understand these are amazing and stunning results. Do this and you will remarkably increase your oral health care, and you'll get a lot of general health benefits as well. Subscribe and watch all my videos that go more in depth over the things we talked about now, and it's never too late to give up sugar especially refined sugars.